to give somebody else uh, a command, a direction, or an instruction, right? So again, this is a whole um, lesson. So if I think about it, have a look here. This is the whole beginning, middle, and end, right? So I have the topic. I have the uh, main vocabulary that I want students to use. I have the context. I have the grammar, right? The grammar focus. And then I have the word power, which is further work with vocabulary. And then continuing the, the um, activity, I have a role playing with the previous content. Then I have another conversation and then the grammar and the exercises, right? And then I have what? Texting. So it's a writing, but it's very um, functional, right? Because students are only going to text each other's uh, messages. So the idea is, let's suppose I start here. I can't simply start here and stop when uh, the bell rings. I have to get a series of exercises and decide when I want to stop. And when I decide when I want to stop, I have to decide what kind of activities I am going to provide students with, right? So for example, here I didn't do anything, but here I decided to do this fill in the blanks exercise. So if I plan in advance, I have control of time and I have control of the types of activities I want to develop with my students and I want the focus I want to do uh, or I want to give if on vocabulary, if on listening or if on vocabulary or grammar, right? But one thing's for sure, I can start here and um, before finishing the exercise the bell rings, right? Or stop here presenting the grammar and not having time to practice it, right? So everything is connected to planning. Planning equals confidence, right? So that means decide what you will say or do, then practice how you will deliver it, and then relax. It's over, right? Because you just have to uh, see what happens in the classroom, right? Oh, right. So planning, creativity, and flexibility, planning, and range of action, multiple intelligences, and learning styles. So we have seen different activities, activities where you're going to use listening, speaking, or some of them where you're going to write or use slips of paper, right? But we have some students that are very visual. For example, in this case, you can use other tools, for example, um, um, projector or a whiteboard or whatever you have uh, in your school. It could be even a television, right? Or even the book or cards or flashcards that you bring into the classroom, right? And, uh, for example, some students, they are very keen on technology. They want, imagine if on this uh, series of exercises I had this on a projector or what if I ask my students to go online and do the exercises and watch a video? Or do the exercises online and play games on the topics that we have? Not all students will be able to do that, but more and more we see students asking, for example, when we ask them to watch, uh, uh, to listen to audios, do you have MP3 files? because they don't you know, uh, uh, listen to CDs anymore. They want everything online or they're play in their players, right? Uh, okay, so there are also drawbacks and pitfalls to overcome, right? Imagine, it's not really this situation, but we face similar situations, like this uh, student talking to uh, his teacher saying, aren't there enough problems in the world already? <laughs> Well, sometimes, once in a while, we hear something like this, right? Or what about this one? And this is, well, I really um, place myself in the student's shoes. Why? Because we do this. It's true. It's, he says, first, they build up your confidence with simple addition and subtraction. Then they slam you with algebra and calculus. It's quite a clever scheme. 
And it's true because we start working with vocabulary and then we give them a context and then we start working with the grammar. Isn't it true? Okay. And of course, they can realize that too, right? Or imagine, this is my favorite uh, cartoon character, Calvin, and he's doing an assignment, right? He says, when I grow up, I want to be an inventor. First, I will invent a time machine. Very nice, isn't it? Then I will come back to yesterday, right? And take myself to tomorrow. <laughs> Why? Then I will skip this dumb assignment. <laughs> and sometimes they think and they say these things to us, isn't it true? So again, we hear a lot of things, right? So when we talk about confidence, we talk about pride in what we do. And sometimes we, s we hear so many incredible things. And this is a quote from Eleanor Roosevelt. She says, nobody can make you feel inferior without your consent. Isn't it true? That means, in other words, nothing can dim the light that shines from within. And if we like what we do, we know why or how and the purpose we want to achieve when we are doing something, even if students do not understand what we are getting to, right? So again, pride is important and endurance as well, right? Guess what we have here? Oh, this bad grade is lowering my self-esteem. And then the teacher says, then you should work harder so you don't get bad grades. And then he doesn't have anything to say. But your denial of, of my victimhood is lowering my self-esteem. <laughs> so it's always the teacher's fault, isn't it true? So again, we have to overcome a lot of difficulties in the classroom. The students who don't like studying English, the students with difficulties, the students causing problems in the classroom, right? So again, strength doesn't come from what you can do. It comes from overcoming the things you once thought you couldn't. Now you are a lot different from the moment you started teaching. You are different teachers now. And today, you will still be better tomorrow. You are getting better and better all the time, right? So success begins in the mind. This is the idea, right? So this is a quote that I like very much from Peter McIntyre. He says, confidence comes not from always being right, but from not fearing to be wrong. Because nobody's perfect, isn't it true? We make mistakes, but we will learn from our mistakes as well, right? So this is something, uh, uh, this is a quote, uh, the uh, be perfect quotes. Uh, so I don't know the author, it says, I may not be perfect, but parts of me are pretty awesome. <laughs> so this has to do with our teaching. My, our teaching might not be perfect, but, but we are perfect in what we do in terms of uh, giving students what they need. Some classes are better than the others. Some classes are awesome, really. But there was an author, I think, I don't remember who said that, that no class is as wonderful as you think it was. And no class was as terrible as you thought it was either, right? So basically, this is what uh, we believe. We get better every single day, right? So I can't do it. Let's cut this T out. So the idea is to say, I can do it, right? So again, let's yes, roar, right? Like this, right? And to do this is to believe, right, that we can get better and better all the time. So in short, never, under, never underestimate your strength, never overestimate your weaknesses, right? So the idea is build your weaknesses until they become your strengths, right? So speaking, fearful or confident? You have to be how? Practice like you've never won and perform like you've never lost. So this is the key, right? So when you enter the classroom, you know that you have done your best. So it's the best possible planning that you could have made. And of course, it's going to be wonderful. And you're going to still get it better next time, right? So this is the idea. But be careful. 
What is your level of confidence? Fair, building, etc., invincible. <laughs> so then be careful, beware. Balance is key. So there is a thin line between confidence and arrogance, right? So um, Moody and Marie Moody, she says, there's a thin line between confidence and arrogance. It, it's called humility. Confidence smiles and arrogance is mercs. And this is true, right? Imagine you're leading the class. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, she, oh. Why did you say sorry? She, uh, she told this <laughs> company about oh. that there is a thin line, uh, there is a thin line between confidence and arrogance. Yes. And, and be careful what you say. Yes. Be careful. Imagine, imagine if this is the teacher, if he gets stuck, everybody gets stuck, right? So then again, we are leading students, right? So we have, again, we have to be careful with what we say. So again, um, when we talk about uh, um, confidence, it's not simply being confident. We, ha we are talking about our will, our skills, our knowledge, our capacity, especially in terms of mental, emotional, and physical ability. And all together, one very important thing is our level of emotional intelligence. Because this will determine how we are going to use the information that students pass on to us. Yes, you're <laughs> totally right. But we are trying different recipes all the time, isn't it? That's the trick, right? OK, so again, confidence. Confidence, like art, never comes from having all the answers. It comes from being open to all the questions, right? So again, what is confidence? Confidence is I matter. It matters. And they matter. So this is when confidence. I matter, it matters, and they matter. So I matter. What I do, what I teach also matters, but my students matter as well, right? So it's not only thinking about one thing, only about myself or only about somebody else, right? So this is the last food for thought that I'm leaving you. Education breeds confidence. Confidence breeds hope. Hope be breeds peace. This is from Confucius, yeah. right? I don't know if you, well, probably you all have heard uh, about the series. Some of you might know the series. All the, um, of course, this is apply, can be applied to any content, any course book, any um, uh, kind of exercise that you decide to work with with your students. I'm just, is, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, no problem at all. So just to let you know that all activities are, uh, were taken from the Interchange series because we are coming up with a new edition. But so that you know, that activity that we did with fill in the blanks, that unit is available for download in level one totally for free. You have just to um, uh, access our site uh, go to interchange uh, fifth edition and go to the sample pages, right? Sample units in each of the levels, okay? Very good. Unfortunately, time is short, so I'm gonna skip the last activity. Do you have any questions, any comments? Because we are heading to... Oh, you liked it, thank you. <laughs> it, well, again, it was a work of art. <laughs> Oh, thank you. You know what? I'm going to show you a video. Why? Because uh, all these uh, new colors that you see in all the presentations that we have um, are, are connected to the idea of better learning. Better learning means we and you together doing the best possible thing for the students, right? Uh, po probably you have seen that already. And then I'm going to ask you to access a link 
and give us your feedback on the session. Because it's not just a matter of coming here and giving you the content we think you want. It's a matter of you telling us if you like the content and what kind of things you would like to see in the future. Because the thing is to do what you want us to do and we want to hear your voices, right? So I'm going to start playing the um, video and then in the meantime we get ready for the raffle uh, uh, section, okay? Let's see if you... I don't know if you will be able to... Better learning to me means teaching students in a fun, engaging and successful way. It's impossible to overestimate the importance of a lesson being enjoyable. I want to help my students to achieve academic success. I would love my students to be able to speak without thinking. You want them to enjoy the lesson, but enjoy the lesson because they've learned something. And that students are actually producing the language that you hoped they would from the lesson. At Cambridge, we understand that achieving all of this isn't easy. That's why we're working with teachers and learners across the world to create the better learning approach where deeper insights help shape richer content to drive stronger results. Language doesn't stand still, and neither does the way we learn. We carry out research around the world and talk to teachers just like you to understand what really works in your classroom, to provide resources, technology and support that you can trust, helping you teach with confidence so that your students can achieve academic success, gain real-world skills, and enjoy a better learning experience. <laughs> Good grades are just the start. So you are going to uh, hear a lot uh, this concept of better learning. And if you access our site, you can uh, find information on our, all our books, you can uh, have an icon, uh, you're going to see an icon uh, where you re uh, read Better Learning. There you're going to find a lot of information with what we are doing, not only in the sense of printing books, but also uh, the research that we are developing, all the things that we are doing for every single uh, area of language teaching and just for you so, um, just so you know there is uh, an icon call um, that is where you read blog when you click blog you have access to a lot of teaching uh, information so you have uh, articles interviews you have videos where you find presentations on different topics authors uh, consultants uh, specialists in different areas psychology um, pedagogy uh, every kind of possible area that you can think of related to language teaching we have there uh, the last count we had around 350 articles available. Some of them uh, are simply, um, let's say, uh, assumptions on language teaching. Some of them are hints on how to deal with different things. And you can really watch a lot of webinars uh, or uh, recordings uh, of training sessions from different authors. So access. Uh, I think that is going to be wonderful and you can download a lot of resources, right? And uh, last but not least, I'm going to give you uh, the link to the feedback uh, to the session. So please, you can uh, either access the site or use this QR code uh, in access. So please, just write the date, my name, of course you have to click, and the um, uh, title, which is Teaching with Confidence, right? Please let us know what you think. It's very important for all of us. And this is something that we are doing worldwide. Every consultant giving um, a training session, a workshop, a presentation, we are giving uh, links to uh, surveys so that we know how close we are <coughs> to what you want, right? To what you need. I want to hear from you, right? <laughs> Yes, can I move on?
Yes? Okay, so last but not least, thank you so very much. And this is, the, is my email address. So if you want to have, uh, give me any uh, considerations, comments, or ask questions, feel free to contact me, right? It was really, really a pleasure to, well, especially today, uh, we were supposed to be on strike, isn't it? And you were here, so thank you so very much for this session, right? Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, oh, yes. Did you get, did you?